Welcome to Trinity To Go, a digital ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church here in downtown Bismarck. And we gather this day for Palm Sunday, April 10th, 2022. And as we begin our service today, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God. God fill you with truth and joy. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing for this week of highs and lows as we remember Christ's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn journey in union with the church throughout the world. Christ entered Jerusalem this day in triumph, a triumph that led through suffering and death to resurrection and new life. In faith and love, may we follow this Messiah, the humble ruler who comes riding on a donkey. Let us pray. God of our salvation, help us to enter with joy into the celebration of those mighty acts by which you have given us fullness of life through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. And today we begin with the reading of the processional gospel as recorded in Luke, the 19th chapter. After he had said this, Jesus went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethpage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered them, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Here ends the reading. The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Sovereign God, for the acts of love by which you have set us free. On this day, Jesus entered Jerusalem triumphantly to suffer and to die, and was greeted with branches of palm. Let these branches be for us symbols of martyrdom and majesty. May we who carry them follow Christ in the way of the cross which leads to life. Through Christ who gives us life and reigns in glory, with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We enter in the name of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord with their lives, praise him as Savior who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for this Palm Sunday is recorded in Isaiah, the 50th chapter. The text, the third of the four servant songs in Isaiah, speaks of the servant's obedience and persecution. Though the servant has been variously understood as the prophet himself, or a remnant of faithful Israel, Christians have often recognized the figure of Christ in these poems. We read, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. 
Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is selected verses of Psalm 31. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I've heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute you. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Here ends the psalm. And the Holy Gospel for this day is recorded in the Gospel of St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests in the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea from Galilee, where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, we've been on quite a journey with Jesus, haven't we? From those opening scenes of Jesus' ministry along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, where he says to those fishermen, Come, follow me. We have journeyed with Jesus and his disciples along the way. Sometimes traveling by boat, sometimes on foot. Jesus has passed through many communities, and as he has done so, his followers have increased in number. And today, on this Palm Sunday, Jesus arrives at his destination. 
he rides into Jerusalem and now those crowds which have continued to get larger and larger are waiting for him to come and to go into their midst and they put their cloaks on the road they wave palms in the air they are excited this is kind of the ultimate isn't it to get to your destination and when you get there to be welcomed so warmly Hosanna praise to the Lord but it seems there's more going on than meets the eye as I've been thinking about our gospel text today and this journey that Jesus has been on with his disciples I'm reminded of a book now, I have always been a fan of Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss was actually Theodore Seuss Geisel. And he wrote 44 books for children. Interesting, though, he didn't start writing them till later in his life. He was involved with many other career paths along the way. But he's most remembered for these books for children. And today I'd like to spend just a little bit of time with his very last book, written in 1990. And at that time, Dr. Seuss was 86 years old. He was suffering from bone marrow cancer, which was spreading. And even though his body was going through all of this tribulation. He wrote what was considered to be his finest book, his last book. Oh, the places you'll go. And I'd like to read a part of that this day and then reflect upon some parallels with the journey Jesus and us as disciples have been on. Let's look at it from the perspective of Palm Sunday, of finally arriving at your destination, at the top of your game. Congratulations! Today is your day. You're off to great places, you're off and away. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know and you are the guy who'll decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care. And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too, games you can't win because you'll play against you. All alone, whether you like it or not, alone will be something you'll be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance you'll meet things that scare you right out of your pants. There are some down the road between hither and yon that can scare you so much you won't want to go on. You can get so confused that you'll start into race down long wiggled roads at a breaknecking pace and grind on for miles across weirdish wild space headed, I fear, toward a most useless place, the waiting place. I'm reminded of Jesus in that section of all oh, the places you'll go. Jesus comes into Jerusalem. It is his day. And he has taken a winding road to get there. He has been in many weirdish, wild places. He has encountered many things. And he has also encountered things that would have scared me to death. Why? Because often Jesus is being sought out to be killed. 
There are many people against him. He has an uphill climb, it seems, as he's going through those communities. As his ministry increases, also his resistance increases. And we encounter with Jesus some things that make us confused. But today it seems in a way that now in Jerusalem, Jesus has arrived at this waiting place. And in this waiting place, they are deciding how they are going to deal with him. And so just as Jesus comes in to Jerusalem in this kind of wonderful parade, now Jesus himself is being paraded around first to Pilate. Then he's sent to Herod. And then he is sent back to Pilate again. Jesus continues to be in this waiting place as they decide what to do. And in our gospel text, we discover what they're going to do. This Holy Week, we will see the results of those actions. But today, we're going just a little bit into this Holy Week, this journey. Today, we are going to this place of being arrested and accused. And that's where things start now, this downward journey. I'd like to continue a little with the book. But on you will go, though the weather be foul. On you will go, onward up many a frightening creek. Though your arms may get sore and your sneakers may leak. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far, and face up to the problems, whatever they are. Be sure when you step, step with care and great tact. Jesus is now on those final steps toward the cross. And the words of Dr. Seuss today are so true. But on you will go, though the weather be foul. Onward you will go, up many a frightening creek. Though your arms may get sore and your sneakers may leak. On you will go. Jesus will not be deterred from his mission. He continues to move forward to that cross, step by step. I'm reminded of the words of the psalmist today. My times are in your hand. And then that great line, But I have put my trust in you, O Lord. That's who we come to today with our thoughts as we go down our own individual paths. My times are in your hand, O Lord. I have put my trust in you. Like Jesus, we are called to move onward and onward. I like how the book ends. Step with care and great tact. And remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft and never mix up your right foot with your left. Life is a great balancing act. In times in life we will have great joy, in times of life we will have great sorrow. But in the midst of that you and I can boldly say, My times are in your hand, O Lord. I have put my trust in you. Because you and I realize that when we journey to the cross, we don't find death there, we find life there. Please join us for our Holy Week services this week at Trinity. If you're unable to be here in person, we will have our services live streamed Monday, Thursday, 1215 and 6, Good Friday, 1215 and 6. And then as we discover again the life we have in Christ 
our Sunday services on Easter Sunday the 17th, 7 o'clock in the morning, 8.30 and 10.30. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church called to follow Jesus in the way of the cross. Make us unflinching ser servants of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the earth and all its inhabitants created in love, train us to recognize your divine goodness in the world around us. Rouse in us a reverence for creation that we take greater care of its resources. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Break barriers that prevent political enemies from working together for the well-being of all. Make a way for peace and collaboration among the nations, especially in the Ukraine, where chaos continues to have its day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring your compassion to bear for those who suffer. Reveal a path for any who are unemployed or underemployed, for those experiencing homelessness, and for all who struggle with money. Comfort those who grieve and restore those who are sick. Especially today, we continue to be mindful of Barb, Brenda, Cheryl, Don, Donna, Fran, Gary, Jerry, John, Karen, Kim, Mary, Mike, Tom, Cheryl, Connie, Danelle, Cole, Denise, Annette, Sherry, Marty, Dwayne, and Jean. Be with them all this day, O Lord. In your mercy, hear our prayer. For Christians around the world preparing this week to journey with Jesus to the cross, reveal to us once again the earth-shaking power of humble service, unmerited forgiveness, and sacrificial love. Lead us all from death to life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Again, we are so thankful for your ongoing generosity. And this week, this past Wednesday, again, bags were filled for our Loaves and Fishes ministry. That cannot happen without your ongoing generosity. And so as we move now forward into spring, we continue to be thankful for your offerings which enable our ministries here at Trinity to continue. And now receive the blessing. And now may God, our Father, bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, please join us for our Holy Week services this week here at Trinity. And as you journey with me to the cross, we continue to be thankful for the gift of life we have in Christ. Thanks be to God. Take care.